Psalm 123 is one of the Shir Amalos. It's uh, literally a song of ascent. It's a song where um, one of the Psalms where we feel elevated, so to speak. It makes us enthusiastic. It makes us high. Okay? It deals basically with humility. Uh, the idea is that if a person really is humble, especially in relation to God, he gets a very a feeling of enthusiasm from it. it says Shira Malas, Elacha Nososi S Enai, Hayoshvi Bashamai. To you I have lifted up my eyes, the one that dwells in heaven. Okay, it does, it's not precisely dwells, I will talk about that, or in thrones, but the nasasi, enai, is lifting up my eye, uh, it's taking notice, it's an expression of a call for help or assistance. Yoshvi has a number of interpretations, in this case it's enthroned, uh, God is, sits on his throne in heaven, but it also um, has an additional yud at the end, which means, so to speak, that he's enthroned for me. It's my enthroning. It continues, avadim al yad adonehem shivcha el yad gevirsa or gevirta. Um, Behold, it is like the eyes of a servant upon their master, like the eyes of a maid servant upon her mit- mistress. Um, to understand this, um, it helps to think about days of yore, uh, say an apprentice working for a master craftsman where he would the apprentice would move into the master craftsman's home and the master craftsman would have him as part of his household but basically to teach him a trade so at the end of the day the apprentice also becomes a master craftsman uh, the idea of a shifcha is serving the mistress it's shall we say like a peasant girl serving the duchess where um, she is also going to learn how to be a lady and how to conduct her household and how to have the meadows of the lady of the house it's two aspects of service of Hashem um, one is a profession that a person makes money at that's an aspect of tikkun olam what a person is doing for the world. The idea of the shifcha is its um, tikkun nefesh, where the person is learning good characteristics, what it is that benefits him. Kain einenu el Hashem elokeinu ad sheyachanenu. Likewise, our eyes are to Hashem, our God, until he will be gracious as a, upon us, but it's more a case of that he shall look upon us with favor. Uh, there's this is different aspects of um, relating to God. There's relating to the God of Scripture that you really have learned the Torah as best you can and learned according to its precepts and um, you're at peace with it. There's also the aspect of the world. Hashem manifests himself in the world that you're at peace with your surrounding, your fellow man, peace with nature. There's also an idea of uh, Hashem dwelling within the soul of a man that you're at peace with your soul. You don't have a guilty conscience. And to get all three of these things together can be difficult and can take time. The psalm continues, third verse, Chanenu Hashem, Chanenu Ki Rav Savanu Buz. God have grace upon us because we are satisfied with contempt. But it's more like, it's 
a uh, satisfaction in this case is a surfeit of content. We're sick of the contempt. It's an aspect of um, recognizing a person's low position in the greatness of Torah. That a uh, person might um, be barely literate and then they start working for a diamond cutter and eventually they're going to be a diamond cutter too. But with Hashem, it's a case where we're ignorant and savages. And he is going to teach us how to be a wise man and a tzaddik. Um, the idea is that we recognize our low and miserable state. Um, sometimes that is absolutely true. Sometimes it's just simply a way of um, recognizing the greatness of God. Uh, what is our, however much knowledge we have, what is that knowledge uh, be when you compare it to the infinite? Uh, whatever good deeds that we have done, can it compare with creation of a world and giving us life? The psalm continues, Rabbah savla nafshenu halaag hasha'anim habuz legeyonim. It says, where our soul is uh, satiated with the mockery of those that are at ease in the contempt of the arrogant, or the conceited, of the vain, geyonim, both of them, the, the concepts are important. The idea is the um, aspects uh, that are, um, that hold us back from ascending, especially in religion. You'll have some people will say, ah, you don't have to do that, everything's fine the way it is, what are you bothering uh, uh, doing? working so hard? Why are you humbling yourself so much? Why are you emulating so much? Um, that's the mockery of the people who are at ease. They say everything's fine, don't bother holding you back. The other side is the people who are vain, where they just can't stand to see the somebody behaving in a humble and, and uh, submissive way. Um, the, it's the word geyonim, and some, it has, uh, sometimes it's written all together, sometimes it's written as one word. Uh, when it's legeyonim, one word, it's emphasizing the aspect of vain, someone who's extremely vain. Um, uh, the nature of Hebrew is that it can be, there's certain letters that can be omitted or added, and Aleph, Yud, Avav are all common. And uh, when you add them all, it tends to emphasize the point even more. Uh, you can also look at the word yonim as two aspects to it. Uh, consistent with this aspect of the um, text, it's um, persecution. That they're actually, you would really like to be a better person and a wiser person, but they're actually holding you back. It's an aspect of persecution. The other word is a, of a dove. A dove is a bird that tends to be known for its humility. Um, so that it's a, it's it, it allows itself to be offered as a sacrifice very easily. Uh, the aspect of dedication, the aspect of uh, being apologetic. Uh, within the Kabbalah, there's a term which. We'll use the technique right now of the um, beginning is wedged into the end and the edge is wedged into its beginning. Uh, this is where you get to Had Yoshvi. He's enthroned for me. That basically through our being humble and submissive, 
to really uh, trying to become imbued with Torah, that's when, so to speak, God becomes enthroned for us. He becomes a personal God. Um, the aspect that is what makes a person a Baal Nefesh, a master of their soul, because to a certain extent, the, um, our soul contains a, is, is a little spark of God. And when we actually can, are, are masters of our soul, so to speak, we have made God our God.